Hey guys, it's Yellow Lord here, and today I'm actually going to be analyzing a trailer that came out for Jellyfish Fields for SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated. I'll try to keep this pretty short because there's not too much to go through, but hopefully you'll enjoy this analysis. So let's go on ahead and get started here. So starting off with the cutscene, when SpongeBob first runs into the Hammer Robot, we can see that the day and night cycle from the pre-alpha is not present. In addition, the checkpoint sign in the back has been rotated to the right, and the lighting seems to be much better overall. Going into this next scene, we can see a demonstration of how the shiny object counter has changed. The font now changes colors depending on how many shiny objects you have, while also bouncing around whenever you collect a shiny object. In this next clip, hammers now have a new sound effect, and so do Tartars. However, with the Tartars, Spongebob defeats it in one hit, while the original game you had to hit them twice before they would go down. While I'm a little mixed about this change, maybe we just haven't seen it in full yet? We'll have to wait and find out. So this next clip, we actually get a preview of the wall jump section from Jellyfish Fields, which no longer has the Spongebob icons and is replaced with arrows instead and seems to be faster, which I think is a good change. Afterwards, we get to see the Tartar Robots cutscene, which compared to the original, has Patrick looking much more horrified, the sign with the squirrel flies off into the distance instead of bouncing off the rock, and Mr. Krabs doesn't seem to appear behind Patrick this time around. From there, we actually get to see Patrick's default belly attack, which seems to have a much more exaggerated animation compared to the original, and seems to actually send him a bit forward, which I think will help make the move a lot more useful compared to the original game. From there, we actually get to see a section of Jellyfish Caves, which now has stalagmites coming out of the ground, visible crystals that replace the lights of the original, the spikes now being brown and coming out of all the holes in the ground, and the lava bombs looking much more detailed and lava-like in appearance. We then get to see a part of the sliding section that you ride after you defeat King Jellyfish. Some notable differences include the pinkish-purple hue of the rocks, the more apparent sand in the out-of-bounds areas and on the slide itself, and the sock icon for Patrick's socks being different, as it's now red and blue on the top compared to the green in the pre-alpha. Which is a very interesting design choice, and I'm wondering why they did it. Anyways, we'll look at this final scene of King Jellyfish leaving after you defeat him in the game. And as you can see, SpongeBob's eyes are a lot more detailed and clean here, and there's also no day and night cycle, which I think it's okay. I don't know if the day and night cycle is still in. Also, the jellyfish bottle looks slightly lighter, but otherwise, it looks pretty good. And then that's how the video actually ends, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this. I know it was pretty short, only a couple minutes long, but compared to the 21 minute video that I made was pretty unstructured and not really that great, I think this would probably be a better thing for me to do from now on, quite honestly. If you guys like that anyway, but yeah, and there were some things I skipped over because it was kind of the same thing from all the footage we got before, but anyways, if you want to see more of these, like, comment, subscribe, the usual stuff, and hey, who knows, I might have more in store, and maybe I'll have more short analysis like these, but for now, I'm out of here, so bye everyone, Yellow Lord, signing off.